Hi, this is Tony again at BesideTheFrontDoor.com, and I want to talk to you about annuals versus perennials. A lot of people get them confused, and here are the key tips to tell you which is the difference and why anyone would plant annuals and why anyone would plant perennials and why you want both. Now first, one of the key tips I like to tell people to help them remember which one is which, annuals, you plant annually. You plant them every year. So that is a good sort of brain trick to remember which one is which on the fly. Annuals that you plant annually. Perennials are the ones that keep on coming back every year. Now, annuals and perennials are set up two different ways. The annuals are meant to complete their entire life cycle in one growing season. Now that means that it wants to germinate, grow, flower, and set a lot more seed just in one season and then it dies. And that's it. The way that an annual is set up, it says I have to set more seed for next year or my species will die out entirely. So it is set for that seed production, which is good for us because it's the flowers that make the seeds. That's why you usually see in containers that they're usually planted with mainly annuals because they are going to flower, flower, flower their hearts out for you all season long. Now to make sure that they do flower all season long, it is really good to do something called deadheading. Deadheading is more than just uh, removing the faded blossoms. You need to get right down to the base, and I'll show you where the base is on this petunia. You need to get right down to the base and get that little bit there. That's a little swelling at the base of where the flower is. That's where the seeds will be produced. Now by deadheading these flowers, the, it tells the plant that it has not set seed yet. It hasn't finished flowering because it hasn't set any seed. So it needs to flower again. So that keeps the most amount of blooms coming for your garden. There are some varieties of different plants that uh, do advertise that they do not need to be deadheaded. Usually it works with them not actually setting viable seed. And that's why the plant keeps on getting the signal to keep on blooming. But uh, most plants, most annuals, will need to be uh, deadheaded for the most bloom. But annuals in general are going to go for you most of the season, even without deadheading. But you'll get more if you do go out and deadhead to prevent those seeds. Now, perennials do come back every year, but they usually have a limited bloom time they have for the season. Depending upon your climate, your weather, and the exact uh, type of plant that you're growing, it's usually between a month or two that they're really at its showiest. So you need to have an extended area so that when one thing's finished, something else takes over in the main spotlight, and then something else takes over from the spotlight from there so that it changes throughout the garden. That's why most of your garden beds focus on a lot of perennials because you can have the area to have the shifting focus for what's blooming right then. Now, if you deadhead perennials when they're blooming, that will encourage them to bloom again, but you're still not gonna get the all season long boom, 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 boom flowers. The way perennials are set up is they are, okay, I flowered, oh, you deadheaded me, I wasn't able to set seed. Okay, let me try again and they'll flower again. And then they're like, well, I'll try next year. And so they know that they have storage capability and they'll just flower again next year. And that just wasn't their year that year. Most of the best and most vibrant perennial beds um, and just garden beds in general, the larger ones, have a mixture of both. So there's always not only different perennials taking over the highlight, but there are some annuals in there to make sure there's some pretty continual color. Also with new perennial beds, annuals are fantastic because perennials always grow larger in bulk from year to year. If you plant them 
close enough that it looks full to you when you plant them, they're way too overcrowded and you're going to have to be dividing them and moving them and splitting them up in just two or three years. So you need to give them some elbow room to grow in. Now it's going to look sparse with that elbow room. So you plant annuals in that space. So it looks full every year, but you don't have to move and divide your perennials nearly as often. Huge labor saving um, process right there is just fill in that extra space so it feels nice and full to you using the annuals. And a good way to do that is with an annual that either one really complements the perennial that you've put in. If you've put in a size that is blooming right now and just as it gets larger it just complements it. Or if you're starting with a very uh, economical small starts, first year perennials that don't really put on a show yet this year, if you find an annual that has a similar feel, whether it's a daisy type of flower, then find a daisy type of flower in the same color in an annual. If it's a perennial that's going to have a flower spike, find an annual that has a spike in a similar color. So you'll have the same feel for your garden while the perennial is growing using your annuals. Now, if these tips are really helpful to you, please click like and subscribe to hear more. And I'll see you again. Bye.